I guess we're still good for Duna. All right, we'll do Duna. We could easily get more science from Minmus if we wanted to. This isn't a very difficult surface outpost. Well, finally we get a jewel contract though. I'll pick it up. And it wants a resource survey scanner on it. That's good, because I want to send one anyway. Alright, we'll 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 get that contract for jewel, finally. I feel like we should land a plane on Ike. I mean, we've landed pods on Ike, but a plane is completely useless on Ike. Hmm. This is a, this is a conundrum. I don't really need a ladder, it's like Ike, but... We have had that one situation where I ran out of propellant, uh, EVA propellant. I don't know if it's safe to land directly on a heat shield though. The purpose of this is to try and reuse the whole batch, but... Hmm. I get the feeling heat shields are sorta... Explodey. How much Delta B do we have? Hmm, are these efficient at all? I mean, it's still better to use a spark though. Maybe this is a horrible idea. Now it's about the same. Well, given that this is about the same, I feel like the other version is better. This is just weird. This back to looking out like a Dalek or something. But yeah, I'm not thrilled with how the other one was going though. In a way, this sort of Space Winnebago thing is a little bit more pleasing. That's not a whole lot of Delta V right now though. Gold tonight? I'm pondering that. I'm pondering that real hard. Um, we technically want to plant a flag on Ike and... I was thinking about an Ike lander right now. Um, position satellite in an equatorial orbit of Drez. But we're at the Duna window right now. But I'm thinking of alternate lander designs. I don't want to send the same thing I did last time. The problem with this design is it just doesn't have enough Delta V. No, I wouldn't say it's good enough to go to Drez. I was thinking of Ike. But it could land on Ike and get back up again, but... It can't do a whole lot more than that. Maybe later on it'll be a reusable lander in the Duna system. But we'd have to package it with something else. And maybe we should just do that right now. Maybe this will be a reusable lander in the Duna system. But then it can't land on Duna and get back to orbit. Okay, so... How heavy are we? 31 tons. That's a lot. But we do have a rocket. So let's say Ike, Depot, and Lander. But that rocket doesn't quite do this much, does it? Um, base tub? I, I, that might be it, yeah. So we'll have to put a fairing there. That looks like enough Delta V. But not if we want to return this though. Yeah, that's the goal. We, that's why we have the parachutes and everything. Uh, I don't like the Delta V. Is there a way to put enough Bobcats to handle this business? This is gonna look like some Russian deal. Um, we actually have our control core there. I don't want to go full Soyuz on it. So, maybe we could have longer boosters now. How much? That's not a lot of thrust weight ratio. Um, because not all the engines are. Aha. Uh, but yeah, we could maybe lengthen this a little bit. I don't know. I wish the Soyuz-ish boost, uh, Soyuz-ish tanks were larger. These just don't cut it very well. No, I don't intend for them to decouple. That's just for show. 
I don't know if they're efficient mass-wise. Yeah, the, the tanks have built-in separatrons that we do not want to use. I'm just gonna... that staging is gonna go away. No, they don't, but there's no equivalent to what they do use for us here. So, might as well be solid fuel. This is getting extreme, yeah. Um, I want to check the heat tolerance on this. 2000, okay, so it's the same heat tolerance. That's a lot of thrust to weight ratio. Sea level though, well, 1.4. Why is the vacuum ISB... Are these... do these not cross-feed? I guess they don't. We need to put fuel lines, I suppose. Can never get your chutes to open? We may need to put drogue chutes on. Though there's plenty of drag on here. What we really need is those air brakes. Ah, we got them now. We need more surface area to slow down. That'll help. Well, that's a heck of a thing. Good idea, bad idea, who knows, let's just go with it. Make sure there's no Kerbals. <laughs> uh, this whole stock series is just one big experiment after all. Here we go, maybe? No, we don't have launch clamps or anything supplying electric charge, so we better hurry. Um, but I needed a mod propellant, hold on. Otherwise that little thing can't dock back to it. I guess we do need to put Kerbals on here, don't we? That is sad. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we do. Very dangerous. 100,000 funds. It's gonna go boom. You always say that though, so I can't trust you. Um, who's expendable? I don't even want to send a pilot. Well, Philney is the least experienced. We'll just send one person. It just says, all we have to do is plant a flag on Ike this time. Revert turns back the clock. Recover just takes the thing off the launch pad. We can't revert. No, it'll, it'll be Philney. No, no, we're not risking Jeb again. Not after trying passing through Eve's atmosphere with a space plane. Jeb. Jeb gets some downtime. We don't have enough parachutes on here, I think. Air brake? No, I wasn't intending to. Um, here we go. Engage. I'm just gonna go straight up for a while, gosh darn it. Uh, why, why today is everything rolling? Because my, like, joystick is miscalibrated somehow or something. Let's try to counteract it. Two thrust weight ratio. Okay, that those those are OP. Plasma thrusters are supposed, supposed to be like ion thrusters. They're supposed to be weak as you earned the OP engines. So all right. Okay, well that's in orbit. All right. Yep. Separation. Okay, so that'll have 4,000 and it'll serve as a refueler for this thing. Okay, but first we'll get this back down before it loses electric charge. We want all those engines back? Hmm, we'll see. Oh, I should arm... Oh gosh, I should have done that earlier. This doesn't work in symmetry. Oh no. That's the problem with a whole bunch of parachutes. I should have done this earlier. Well, I don't think parachutes is the harder option here. 
Well, hopefully we'll land on land. Or maybe not. I'm, uh, I'm not too sure how hopefully I am about that, but we'll see. Look, I mean, if I was using mods, I'd have uh, countermeasures for that. My infamous Pac-Man encapsulation device. Legendary, even. Why are we not slowing down, given that... We're gonna end up in the water. We're actually going faster. This is wrong. I think ULA is actually trying to have a helicopter parachute. Uh, capture the parachute of the thing. Which is an older idea. The air brakes are for later to allow the parachutes to come out. Really. I put them out so that, um, just in case I lost communication. Yeah, the Corona program had them. But those were tiny little capsules, not engines. Helicopters. <laughs> well, yeah, again, it's an old idea. The most audacious proposal was to capture, get, uh, catch the Saturn V first stage with a helicopter. That would have taken a very special helicopter indeed. Okay, before it flops, recover. Got a nice solid base though. Well, 60,000 funds back, so that's 40,000 funds still lost. Saturn V helicopter? That... Uh... It's not... ...a bad idea, necessarily. The problem is deploying the helicopter blades, which is difficult at high speeds. And then, so, the problem is, okay, at high speeds you can't deploy the helicopter blades. To get to low speeds you need to deploy the parachutes. And then, you gotta have to rely on the parachutes to like separate so that you can deploy the helicopter blades. It's just a mess at that point. Uh, yeah, you, you make that happen. You show us how to do that. Rotary Rocket Roton. Of course it was made by skilled composites. I get the feeling that it wouldn't have had orbital performance like that. I mean, it wouldn't be able to get anything... It, it probably took too much of its mass to have that system in the first place. No, I, can't, I haven't really reconciled myself to the stock rotary system yet. Haven't quite figured out what to make of all that business. Alright, Duna? I don't want to do a mid-course adjustment, but it's looking like I need to. Walnuts and crisp, crystal ginger. I haven't tried crystal... I haven't tried any ginger in it, but... I mean, we're not intending for Philney to come back at this juncture. Philney's going to be sticking around Ike for a fairly long time. Just putting that out there. Vilni of Ike. Doesn't doesn't taste that good? Well, I mean there's the dough, which is like one cup of flour. You you, you prepare the yeast, it's just a little bit of yeast, uh, like half a teaspoon water, warm water of course. And then a little bit of salt, and then put the one cup of flour, and then um, garlic, olive oil. Uh, you have to let it sit for a while. You know, knead it, sit for a while, let it puff up. And how puffy the crust is depends on how long you let it sit. So, uh, you know, uh, usually it doesn't take more than an hour and a half letting it sit around. 
and then roll it out. Uh, put the sauce of your choice. I use both the marinara sauce and um, which got Alfredo sauce and cheese, you know, and then whatever toppings you want. Something is missing. What does it taste like? I mean, if you can do the sauce, then we're probably gonna look to other missions while this is on its way for once. Despite my lack of curved alarm clock. Because we've got other potential uh, transfer windows coming up. Deep dish, thin, thick, thin crust. Yeah, but I mean, you can make them all. Because uh, how thick your uh, crust is just depends on how much dough you prepare for a given area, right? I mean, I guess you could use less yeast, but really. Or spend less time letting it rise. Yeah, S1B shutting down its engines. Oh, well, that's not quite... Okay, I see what they did. Alright, that's not the same as the Saturn 1C though. That's just shutting down the center engines three seconds before the outboard engines. Okay, so that's not because of G-forces or anything. That's just three seconds. That's just because... I guess they wanted to send that command first. I mean... Or make it a gentler... Uh, gentler thing as they shut down the engines. No way, not for three seconds. Three seconds is gonna, isn't going to make it any difference at all. No, I think uh, all that's going there is... I mean, I guess you could say... Yeah, so the cutoff isn't hard. Yes, yes. I mean, it's not for G-forces on the crew. Let me put it that way. Uh, it may be for G-forces on the hardware to make sure the cutoff doesn't uh, cut, throw something off, right? So, yeah. Or uh, complicate staging in some way. Maybe. But, yeah, it's only three seconds. I mean, it's almost ignorable. I don't think with the S1B stage... S1C, the one on the Saturn V, yes. They did. That came up on Apollo 6. Yeah, pogo thing. And on the S2 stage. I mean, the S1B is a bundle of sticks, so it's pretty rigid. But there's a lot of weird plumbing going on. That's the only downside to it. I could see how, with all those tubes, the vibration could be complicated, but... Generally speaking, they considered the S1B stage pretty reliable. We'll just do a mid-course adjustment. Okay, our Winnebago, Winnebago delivery system is on its way. But 130 days, let me go to the tracking station and see where else we can send missions to. Yeah, I don't think we've got anything to communicate out there, so... We'll follow uh, this mission for the time being and see if something else comes up. Okay, we'll do that. But uh, we'll time warp at the tracking station so that... Oops, no, 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 no. Uh, so that I can see if there's any other interplanetary opportunities. Don't run your nukes unless you have to. What happened, Lylord Root? Core life got you. How does that work? Uranium depletes? Yeah, what mod does that? Is that part of the Je ne sais quoi package or something? Oh, you've got USI, okay. Well, I don't think there's any point trying to look at Drez or anything until we get more science. Then even I've come- oh yes they did. You just can't tell because they were Commodore 64s. <laughs> That's, that's what Baran used to land, you know. 
the Soviets actually captured a Commodore 64 from uh, American spy thingamajig, and uh, and they used it in Beren. Yeah, yeah, but Beren had to have a computer. You can't deny that. Two, in fact, one in Energia and one in Beren. I'm sort of copying a story. Of course, the Commodore 64 thing is total fabrication on my part, but there was an instance where the Soviets did use American hardware that they captured in in the actual case from a spy balloon. Well, it depends on your definition of computer. Um, Gemini had a rendezvous computer of a sort. The disky interface was the first, you know, I mean, I guess you could say it was the first, but yeah, it's complicated. It was a rendezvous computer in Gemini. But it wasn't anything, it didn't have all these other programs, it was a very specific thing. Oh, opening Mikko's link. Please let it be a Commodore 64, please let it be a Commodore 64. It doesn't look much like a Commodore 64. But may maybe there's it's deep inside of it. <laughs> now how does its stats compare to a Commodore 64? I guess that's the important thing. 33.6 kilograms it says down there. Get the feeling that that's heavier than a Commodore 64. Well, yes, I'm aware it was done automated. Not that they had any choice, they didn't fit in life support into Buran, <laughs> so... It has about eight times, nine times the RAM? Jeez. Well, uh, Filney is more of a colonist for Ike, actually. Towards auto it definitely does lean towards automation. Because they really, really don't trust the, the cosmonauts, unfortunately. As opposed to like the Gemini thing where they made a point to me, you know, get astronaut input and everything. Moran was just plain too expensive for the Soviet space program. Heck, even the U.S. economy could barely run a space shuttle, and the space shuttle was actually probably, I mean, relative to the economy, cheaper, because we did the solid rocket boosters and all that business. Um, that's probably a good periapsis. Everything's going the wrong way, it's fine. It actually doesn't matter too- well, it does sort of matter that we're going around this way proper way, otherwise we'd have a lot more burning to do to capture around Ike, but other than that, it doesn't matter too much how we capture around Ike. Brilliant booster, um, but I think I maintain that they probably shouldn't have done Baran at all and they should have focused on the reusability of Energia and then maybe they could have made it continue to happen even after the class of the Soviet Union, at least in its uh, smaller configuration with the single engine core and two boosters. You know, the thing is now, they, they keep trying to make some sort of replacement for Proton. They wouldn't need to have to do Angara or any of this. They would already have a good booster if they just had the single engine core Energia M plus two, two of the boosters, basically Zenit boosters, and they would already have their thing. So, and then of course there is the larger configuration too. They locked, yes, Ukraine was pretty essential, yes. I don't know if Angara's done. I mean, it, they keep changing their mind on that. So, not entirely sure what the heck is going on. Yeah, I mean, of course, Korolev, I think, was Ukrainian, and there was a lot of that business going on. So, and there was, there's a design bureau in Ukraine. I have a book on Korolev. I mean just called Korolev <laughs> and then I've got other uh, other stuff like uh, Boris Chertov's you know you're talking about the Boris Chertov one yeah 
No, I've got that. Um, but aside from Boris Chertok, I've got a whole book on just Korolev, which is a proper biography by a historian. So. Not that the historian doesn't also refer to Chertok, of course. Yeah, I mean, these are books I have to consult when doing the Mission Profile series. Not all accounts of these uh, space events agree, though. Sometimes I have to make a judgment call. Okay, well, let's see if our Winnebago actually works. If it'll stop rolling. Drag trouble with the STS-88 return. You've done that many shuttle missions and then you had drag trouble? Okay, well, hopefully our flags are... Uh, we got well. We already did the South Pole. Apparently. Lowlands and I don't have uh, biome on Val on Ike, but that seems to be in the grayish area. Maybe over here would be good. Does that look like highlands to you? I can't really tell what the highlands are when, like, everything is ridgy. Yeah, Moho. Well, it's not Mercury, but it's still a pain. That that seems like a lot for Moho rather than Mercury. That's more like a Mercury number. Route. Something went horribly wrong there. Oh, je ne sais quoi. Right. What scale is it at anyway? 2.63. Well, I guess it's... Yep. You're gonna have to watch out for your moho. No, no wheels. This is the Spaceballs Winnebago. I don't remember if it had wheels. It might have. Yeah, actually it probably did. It's a hovering Winnebago. Well, no, it's a baguette Winnebago. Lands on its baguettes. It's a French Winnebago. Oh, you can use that to give the SRVs a thrust curve. Didn't even think about that. Well, some of them gimbal. Not all of them gimbal, right? Some sideways motion. A little bit of a skid. Okay. Well, anyway, um, crew report. Gosh darn it. Central mountain range and it's not new? I guess that must have been, it must have been where Val landed. <sighs> yeah. Well, 36 signs for... Uh, maybe one of these rocks is a rock that we can cover some stuff from, but we've already gotten Duny Ejecta ones. Okay. Fill me at the central mountain range. Let's not do this again. Yes, I mean, we've already been here. You never need to come here again, right? Those are the science rules in Kerbal Space Program. Oh, there's some rocks, but I don't know if any of them are any good or whether they're, they're probably all just terrain scatter. That's a suspicious small one right there, though. Let me focus on this little guy. It's probably just terrain scatter. Yep, walking right through. Okay, yeah. I think we have to get a mission that specifically spawns them. Okay, back on the Winnebago. We did not get any science. Problem is, we can't just do random hops. We'll probably have to go all the way back up to that and refuel first. Uh, okay, that's a bit sideways, but all right. It's going prograde, right? Right. EVARCS. Um, they could be using hydrazine. You know the the original 
jetpacks that they were going to use were hydrazine, and they had to have like metal pants for those. That's the version that was supposed to be tested on Gemini. Or was that HTP? It might have been HTP. Hydrogen peroxide. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if uh, nitrogen thrusters can let you float above something like Ike though. So my guess is probably hydrogen peroxide thrusters. I think it was like 9 and... Uh, definitely Gene Cernan on Gemini 9 was supposed to test that jetpack. But he, uh, the EVA was so rough he couldn't even get that thing... Get to it because it was uh, tucked into the trunk. Uh, those were nitrogen, yes. On the... On the shuttle MMU was nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And even then, they didn't think it was safe, so after um, STS-51A, they decided to make a new one called Safer, which isn't even really used for what they were originally supposed to be used for. Well, I made the first astronaut biography on the channel, Pete Conrad. He's pretty much up there. Um... Mike Collins is up there. Al Bean is pretty high up there. It's either Mike Collins or Pete Conrad. Mike Collins because he wrote about it in a very compelling way and Conrad because he was just such an interesting character. Well, because between Conrad and Mike Collins, they're on the top for different reasons. It's tough to compare the two. Bill Neal will have to tank up and try again to find another biome. I should probably just hunt for a biome map of Ike so that I don't just... I mean, of course I can EVA Phil Nee so that we can see which biome we're over, but... I should probably turn tune these down before I start firing them. Because we don't have mob propellants on board to replenish it. Atlas. Hold on a sec. Oh, magnetism. Alright. RCS off. That's a lot of magnetism. Let me take a look at that. Okie dokie. Well, it's got three engines, so it's Atlas. <laughs> Those are the rules. You figured out how to get the booster engines off? Yes, you did. So gotta figure out how to do it like a skirt, though. Progress, but... You'll have things that you could improve upon, which is always good. Alright, let's make sure we get electric charge. Well, the route is getting started on his stream, so it'll be uh, short compared to my normal Saturday stream, which is fine. Tomorrow will be longer. And, uh, yeah. Yep. That will be good. Alright, so with uh, Philney here, a permanent resident in orbit around Ike for now. And uh, we need to get him to get some science off of it. But uh, I'll pause the music and say thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.